Impact Wrestling presents Under Siege, live May 26th on Impact Plus and Fight. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the CompuWare Arena in Detroit, Michigan, it's time for your Bound for Glory main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the special enforcer for the main event, Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Listen to the reaction here in Detroit. Yes, the Olympic gold medalist, the best wrestler on the planet, Kurt Angle, special enforcer for this NWA World Heavyweight title matchup. And Don, I have to go back to what we were told, I would say, well, what, an hour, hour and a half ago, following that heated, volatile confrontation between Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. Samoa Joe, on the orders of Jim Cornette and TNA management, was physically removed from the CompuWare Arena in Detroit. We're gonna settle this one-on-one. -on -one. Mr. Rudy Charles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the combatants. First of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 258 pounds and comes to us from Venice Beach, California. He is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. This is... Yeah. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 235 pounds and is the current reigning and defending NWA heavyweight champion of the world, the king of the mountain, Jeff Take the crowd for Mike. I was just gonna say, <laughs> what an incredibly defined reaction to both champion and challenger. Here in Detroit, and boy Don, I tell you what, he took that ring robe off, and I think you're right on the money. Take a look at the physique of Sting. He told Meme that he's lost close to 20 pounds to get ready for this match. He just got himself into a rigor and into a shape like he's not been before because he knows what it's gonna take. Referee Rudy Charles holding that NWA World's Heavyweight title belt aloft, and yes, you hear the bell, the opening bell, and here we go. It's title versus career. Jarrett puts the gold on the line. Sting puts his career at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be the last time that we see Sting competing in a wrestling ring. Think about this too, outside the ring is the special enforcer. Kurt Angle, he's there to make sure you don't see the shenanigans from Jeff Jarrett, and he's also there to make sure that Sting also goes the line right, and you see Jarrett right there. Just snapped one off on Sting, and again, how about we that? talked about how Jeff Jarrett considers that belt. It's him, it's a part of him. And yes, a lot of people hate him, and you heard the crowd, but don't disrespect him, I'll tell you that. Did you see the sly grin on the face of Jarrett? after they hooked up, after they locked up in mid-ring, and Jarrett was able to take Sting down to the mat with ease. Shot off the rope, Sting attempts that high hip toss, and Jarrett answers with a high hip toss of his own, and you can just sense the level of confidence rising in the champion, Jarrett. Well, Jeff Jarrett wants to be the one to say I ended Sting's career. How many people can say that about an icon? How many people can be the one to come out and say, look, it was me that ended Sting's career. That's the goal of Jeff Jarrett right here, and think about it. That's a mark on your record that nobody can ever take away. The close-up camera look at Sting's face, it was almost that look of bewilderment at what we've seen here in the opening minute of this matchup. Attempted another hip toss out of the corner, but Sting's got his arms hooked on those top steel cables. Turns Jarrett around in the corner, swings with a wild right hand, and Jarrett oh. back with another hip toss. And what we're seeing here in the opening minutes is Jeff Jarrett out wrestling Sting. Jeff Jarrett has come into this title match, Don, I think more prepared uh, than I've ever seen him. And I don't know if it's ring rust on the part of Sting. I don't know if Jeff Jarrett has his number at this point, but I can tell you this. To this point in the match, Jeff Jarrett has thrown Sting off of his game. Oh, absolutely. Look at Sting. He's looking a little confused. And, you know, you're right. He was gone for two months, and yeah, he was getting himself mentally focused and getting himself ready. But he, but he hasn't wrestled in two months. Where Jeff Jarrett has constantly been in the ring, having to deal with different situations. And think about it, Jeff Jarrett has just come to this match. Look at him. He is so fluid. I've not seen Jeff Jarrett so short and this crisp in a long time. But Jeff Jarrett is showing everybody right now why he is king of the mountain. And who got the better of it right there at the end of that exchange? And now we sense frustration on the part of Sting. Did you see that? Yes. He slapped the corner turnbuckle. And he you have to wonder if maybe doubt is creeping into the mind of Sting. He put his career on the line in this match. He took two months off to get prepared both mentally and physically. But I've got to be honest with you, to this point, it's been all Jeff Jarrett. Oh, it has been completely Jeff Jarrett. Sting, I think, just trying to find some kind of an advantage, something that he can get it going his way. Nice block right there, and now Sting showing some life. That's what he's got to have, but Jarrett able to go under a beautiful block kick by Jeff Jarrett. And look at Sting, he gets out of the ring. Swing and a miss with the clothesline by Jarrett, then he drilled him, yes. Drilled him with that drop kick. Jarrett did connect, rather. And now, there it comes, the Jarrett stretch. As we see outside of the ring, oh. Sting eye to eye with Kurt Angle. But, oh, Jarrett, he's cocky and he's confident. I think right there, that's what Sting needed to do. Get out, regroup, just change the plan. Whatever it is, Jeff Jarrett right now is owning you. He's owning you in that ring. And that is just, the new look is not intimidating oh. Jeff Jarrett in any way. Yes, certainly a more colorful Sting. In appearance here with those red and black tights, 
the different white and red face paint than we have seen Sting have in many, many years. And Jarrett, you yep, you can it. see that level of cockiness because he's bad mouthing Sting. Look at this. That's why you do get the crowd behind you. Get the crowd behind you. Did Jarrett just spit at him? Oh, that's now you can see Sting just reaching back, realizing. Coming right at him, and look at this, Jeff Jarrett telegraphed it, look at Sting! Puts on the brakes, takes it off, slaps him off! Mid-green powerbomb by the challenger! Wow, that's what he needed right there, just to take the wind out of Jarrett's sail. Gonna take him up to his shoulders, check this out. Oh, oh. right on top of the ropes! Dropped him right in the front oh. of the oh. oh. line. Oh. line! outside! Up and over the top, Jarrett crashes down to the arena floor! And you see Kurt Angle, yes, the special enforcer around the ringside area. Oh, Jarrett just shoved Angle, and Angle shoved him back. Well, give Jarrett trying to let him know, look, I'm the king of the mountain, I'm the champ. You can't do that to me, but Kurt Angle oh, said to him, look, I'm the enforcer out here, get back in the ring. You're, You're damn right. Nothing. King of the mountain, Olympic gold medalist. Sting just waiting, just building confidence, getting more and more. Jeff Jarrett trying to impose his will on Kurt Angle, and it's not working. Look at look at Sting asking him to come in. Now Sting says, I'll come out then. I'll tell you what, I'll come out. He busts him right against the rail. Drops down to the arena floor. You're right, takes Jarrett, just flings him right into the steel. Grabs him by the blonde locks. Runs him around the ringside area. Oh, there goes Jarrett again. This time, chest first into the guardrail. I think Kurt Angle's let Sting go a little bit here. Just because Jarrett got cocky with him, so he figures out. Hey. Cameraman got knocked down. He was in the way of the battle. Rough situation around the ringside area. You're right. Cameraman just went ass over tea kettle. Now the referee. See. Look at the referee telling him. Look, what? what? Kurt Angle just threw the referee to the ring. Oh, and Sting just flung Jared again in the guardrail. I think what Angle was doing right there was telling the ref, look, I'm the enforcer outside. You get in the ring. I like it. Gonna try and do it again, but no, this time there's a reversal, and this time Sting goes back first into the steel. Pushing cameraman out of the way, picking up a steel chair. He's measuring Sting, the champ. Nope. Kurt Angle gonna take that steel chair out of his hand. Well, uh, you can only test him so much, and you can see Kurt Angle right there standing up. And now you see Sting just standing waiting behind, and there it is. Does Garrett worry too much about Kurt Angle and not worried about the task at hand? This was the idea behind TNA management and Jim Cornette to position Angle outside as that special enforcer. Now, up the ramp. Oh, oh man, what a suplex. Drops him right on his back. What a shot right there. That'll knock the air right out of you. Now listen to Sting and the crowd mimics him and he looks at Kurt. You saw that? Kurt Angle said, okay, that's enough. Now work it back in. Absolutely oh, no, no. Pro no protection there as Jarrett went back first on that entrance ramp. Now Sting with that steel chair follows up and you know what? He stopped Jarrett from using the chair and he just stopped Sting as well. Well, he's got to. And look, Sting, I don't think he'd believe it. Oh, oh wait a minute. Did wow. you see that? Well, Sting ducked though. He was going for the back of Sting's head. You think so? Oh, I, don't I don't know. You? Jarrett just crashed right into Angle and then snapped Sting right over. You think that was an accident? Oh, it had to be an accident because Sting just ducked at the right time. If he wouldn't have, he'd have cracked Sting. But he did end up hitting that chair right into Angle. You think he did it intentionally? I mean, look how things worked out here for Jarrett. He's got Angle down and out. He's got Sting in trouble. We're gonna take him out and, oh, drops him again. Wow, he leveled, he leveled Angle, didn't see it coming. Leveled him straight on with that chair and now Jeff Jarrett, I don't think he planned it, I just think he's being you know, take up, taking the opportunity there that's in front of him. Now puts the boots to Sting in mid-ring. He's got Sting in trouble here. And Jarrett again drives that boot right into the shoulder of the challenger, who, yes, is putting his career on the line. To the corner, off the ropes, ducks that back elbow, Sting springs off again, and here comes the sleeper. You can see right there he's got it holding Sting, trying to Work his head out of that grip right there, and oh man, Jarrett's just applying it with such force right now. Jarrett has the sleeper hold applied on Sting, nowhere close to the ropes. There you see that over the shoulder camera shot as Kurt Angle has made his way back up to his feet. He was down on the ramp after that collision earlier. Angle's back up as a special enforcer, and Sting's digging down deep to break the sleeper. Nice elbows right there to the gut, and that's what you do, take the air out of Jarrett, and he'll have to release that grip. Oh, but Sting, you can see them both fighting, and it just looks like Sting can't, still can't seem to get a grip on him, and now he's ducking, now he's got a middle. Oh, mid-ring collision for both of them. 
Both men go for the flying cross body block. Both men connect, and both Sting and Jarrett are down. I was just looking outside the ring. You can see Kurt Angle over there where he took the shot. He's trying to get his composure. You can look at him, but he looks like he's getting it back together. But still, you got to wonder what's going through his mind. TNA official. Yep, senior referee Rudy Charles putting in the count. He's at five right now. Everyone counting along here in Detroit. Six and oh man, he's no, no movement. Not even moving. No movement from either Sting or Jarrett. Look at this. Now he's at eight. Eight. There's nobody moving. At nine. nine. They're both like that. Here he goes for wait a minute. Eight. Look at this. Wow. Olympic slam. gonna let this be done with a count out. The special enforcer has just become the special referee. Senior official Rudy Charles Let's dumped out to the floor. He just got it on. Get it on. Let's tie him loose. He's got them both up. That's what you do. If they now look at him, just throw it blow after blow. Sting yeah. fighting back. Sting getting the better of it here. Repeated shots for Jarrett. Gonna fire him off into the ropes. Here goes Jarrett up. Inverted atomic drop. Right. Oh, and then he just takes it right to him as Jared tries to get to his feet. And he does it with another one, Mike. Another clothesline. Stinger splash in the corner. He caught Jared completely unaware. Punted from behind. There it is. Scorpion death drop. Cover. Angle one, counts one. Two. two. Oh, he just gets his shoulder up just in time. Woo. Just that close to a new champion, Sting on the verge of becoming the NWA World's title holder and also keeping his wrestling career alive. I like what Angle did right there. He went to Sting and said, hey, no, he got the shoulder up. I mean, it wasn't a slow count. It was right on. Kurt Angle making sure it's all. He just decided to take it over himself. Here goes the stroke, oh! and he hits it. Planted him face first. Jarrett hits his patented move. Tills Angle to count. Angle down for the one, count. One, two. Whoa, he got the shoulder up, but you got to give Angle credit. You have to. Perfect cadence from Kurt Angle, now the special referee, the former special enforcer. Jarrett now picks up Sting at the head, at the hair. Rocks him right hand to the jaw. Uh-oh. Going to go for a pile driver here, but Sting fights it off. Can he put his weight advantage to use? You saw it in the tail of the tape. Look at this. Oh, oh and he does it right to the head of Jarrett. He's got it right here. Pin two. two. Oh, man, now you talk about split second. Wow. Just, Just a split second. It's going to say the same thing. How close can you come? Sting making his way up the corner, and Jarrett cuts him off low blow from behind. Well, you can see right there, he turns into Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle just giving him the what for right there. Now Jarrett gonna make his way up oh, into the corner. This. Is he gonna go for the stroke off the middle rope? Here it comes. This could end it right here. Sting though fights back, realizing his career's on the line, and then he sends Jarrett going. Yeah, just tosses him right down to the to the mat, and oh, oh man, went for a splash out of the corner. Jarrett gets both knees up, made contact with the chest of Sting. Give Kurt Angle credit right there. He's making sure both these guys do it in the ring right here. Now look at this. Could he be going for? He's going to go for the figure four. He of course sure he is. is. It's his patented move. He twists, and he's going to cap it off now. He's got that leg hook. Figure four. And look at the ring positioning by Jarrett. Dead center. Middle of the six-sided ring. Where's Sting going to go? There's nowhere for him to go, and he just keeps pulling back on it and pulling back harder. He's just trying to damage Sting and end it for him. And look at Sting, does he have anything left? You can see the pain on his face, Mike. Shoulders of Sting momentarily down for a two count from referee Angle. Not sure if we caught it or not. We were in so tight that time as we saw Sting. Can he use his power here to turn him over? He has turned him over. Jeff Jarrett, oh, able to get loose. And now look at this, Jarrett gonna try it again. Gonna work on that leg. Gonna hook oh, look at this. Ankle lock right in Kurt Angle's face. Check this out. He's fusing the ankle lock. Right in front of Kurt Angle. Angle's famous submission move applied here by Jarrett. Oh man, he thought, well, you know what? That's the kind of resiliency he can show. You gotta do anything it takes. He touched and what the a statement that would make. Sting's fingertips touched the ropes, but Angle did not call for the rope break. And he couldn't hold on to him. 
and Jared just pulled him right back, and you can see Sting just fighting everything. Jared not gonna let up on it, though. Look at him, just hold it on. First it was the figure four, now it's the ankle lock, but Sting somersaults rolls through, and Jared goes out to the floor. Wow, that's how you counter that. Sting able to somehow get Jared off of him. You could see that Kurt Angle was ready to count him out if he would have tapped, but he didn't do it. Sting obviously favoring his knee as he gets back up to his feet in the ring. And you can see now hopping on, on one leg, Don, oh, because of the, the effects of first the figure four and then the ankle lock. And well, how about this? He's Baseball got his bat. comes into play. He's got his bat right there. He said no. Look at this, Kurt Angle not going to, oh, look at though. Whoa. Sting saying no. Sting with the baseball bat pointed right at the chest. Of Wait a minute, Jared. Jared, Jared got to get oh. But Look at this, Sting, Sting got it again. He said, I got your guitar right here, Jared. And look at him, here he goes. Turn him over. Got it, turn him over. He's got it, he's going to turn him over. Can he do it? He's got it. Get Jared, Jared on. What do you say, Jared? Look at this! Fighting oh, he's applying the pressure! Is he gonna tap? Is he? Is look he at gonna... Jared fighting it! He's tapped Ladies and gentlemen, you have been witness to a very, very special night in the history of professional wrestling and in the history of this TNA organization. What you have been a part of, everyone here in Detroit, everyone watching at home, this is a night, this is a moment, this is a picture that we will never, that we will never ever forget. And look at Jeff Jarrett right there, stunned that he doesn't have that belt. He's got to look at Sting holding it up in the air. But one thing about Jeff Jarrett, you can't take away the four and a half years, the different times he's held that title, more than anybody, longer than anybody, as he watches Sting celebrate. You're right, Don. We saw that look on the face of Jeff Jarrett, almost as if Jarrett was saying that he could picture himself being the one celebrating, holding the NWA World Heavyweight title belt aloft, but that's not the case. Sting A saves his career, and B becomes the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Man, how about that taking the guitar shot? And he just didn't even let it face him as he fought through it. Jarrett had to know it was over then. And when he got that Scorpion death lock in, unbelievable night, unbelievable night. And another great camera shot, looking over the shoulder of Jarrett. Jarrett holding his head at this point as Sting straps on the goal, positions it in place. The crowd, Look at they're that. going crazy. Sting Tell soaks it in. Jarrett obviously frustrated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an incredible night. For Don West, I'm Mike Today. Thank you very much for being a part of Bound for Glory. Just lay out and soak in the atmosphere here in Atlanta, Georgia, as Sting makes a return to what he called his old stomping grounds. Tonight at Bound for Glory, Sting in the role of the challenger. In addition to that championship, Don, you know that he is fueled by one thing, the revenge that he wants to get for the abuse that his son Garrett had to suffer in Southern California. Sting was in Florida, he had to watch it, he had to feel so helpless right now.
Sting can get his revenge. competitors for our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA senior official, Mr. Rudy Charles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for your Bound for Glory main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my right. He weighed in this morning at 245 pounds. Tonight, he returns to the very city where he spent over a decade of his professional wrestling career. Now residing in Venice Beach, California, this is the challenger, the icon, Steve! And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 235 pounds. Tonight, he returns to the very city where in 1996 he became an Olympic gold medalist. He is the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, Kurt Angle. Referee Rudy Charles holds the gold high in the air. The TNA World Heavyweight Championship, it's on the line, it's at stake. This is what we've been waiting for. This is our Man for Glory main event. This is Kurt Angle and Sting. And Don, you just have to know that in Sting's mind, he had to do everything within his power to hold back during those in-ring introductions by JB in anticipating that revenge that he looks to gain here against Kurt Angle. Mike, I've got goosebumps. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We're with this thing. These two guys with it all on the line, and yeah, you said it, but what better revenge, Mike, than to get it in the ring, to beat Kurt Angle at what Kurt Angle feels he does better than anybody in the world. And that's Russell, and Sting wants to embarrass him right out here and show him that he went too far. You can almost tell by the body language of the champion, by the look on the face of Kurt Angle right there, as he heard the reaction from the crowd here in Atlanta. He realizes that it's, it's a great atmosphere here at Bound for Glory. And I think when Angle received that kind of a response from this crowd, maybe he was a little taken aback, a little surprised, that in the town where he won the Olympic gold medal here in Atlanta, Georgia, that he received that kind of response as Angle works on the arm and wrist of the challenger sting. Well, you know, and that was 11 years ago, and right now I think these people just remember the last few weeks. And that's what he did to Sting, what he did to Sting's family. And 
when you cross the line that far, it's hard to forgive. It's hard to, you know, cheer somebody for what they did in the past when you realize that they put this, that he put his hand on Stink's son. Sting working on the arm, and you can see the effect that it has there. Angle trying to wring out the pain, maybe get a little life back into the wrist, into the arm, and into the elbow as well as Sting applies pressure here in the opening minute. Kurt Angle's gonna try to make this a complete ground game. Something that he does so well, something that he did so well here. And this, oh, look at Sting though, turn it around. He doesn't quite have the shoulder down to the mat, but I'll tell you what, that caught Angle by surprise. Might be the same game plan for Sting, quickly stuffed off into the side, head scissors by Angle. Sting breaks it, stands at attention, and both men make the eye contact. And I hate to say that there's mutual respect between the two in terms of, of personalities, but you know there has to be mutual respect when it comes to in-ring abilities. Well, neither one of them is gonna take the other one for granted, that's for sure. I mean, they, they've just, they've been in this ring too long. They've got too much experience. They can't let it become too emotional. Whoa. And I think that's what Kurt Angle was trying to do, was trying to make it emotional for yes. staying a nice hip toss. Wow. The shoulder block by Angle. Countered perfectly by Sting with that high hip toss. And you saw the look on Angle's face when he rolled right out here, Don, just a couple of feet away from us. And there you see the close-up look right there. Angle caught off guard by that quick counter by Sting. Sometimes it's just the little things, too. I think he hit his back in a strange way on that hip toss. And you can see Kurt Angle just... He's kind of checking himself. He's holding the right hip. Yep. Where he kind of landed right there. And, it's you know, exactly the case. And, and, and you can see in his eyes. I think he's a little surprised at how methodical and how well thought out Sting's game plan is. I think he thought Sting was going to come at him in a flurry, and he didn't. That was what I anticipated, but the more I watch this match unfold, the more I think that Sting probably has the proper strategy, probably has the, the proper game plan. Go at it at your own pace, as we're seeing now, and now Sting unloads, turns Angle around in the corner. Corner mount. Listen to a Moraine in those lights as the crowd counts along. I mean, look at this, just one shot after another. And one thing I've noticed with Sting, he's not afraid to take a little to give a little. He let Kurt Angle get build his confidence, build his confidence, and then as soon as the window opens, he just goes right through it, and that's what he's done. And Kurt Angle right now has just got himself into a buzzsaw. Oh, attempted the reversal by Angle. Sting puts on the brakes, and you can see how Angle was surprised right there. Angle catches him off guard with a kick, and then a European uppercut rocks him. The reversal now, shooting Angle off. Sting goes for the drop kick. Angle one step ahead. He hooked that top rope, but Sting uses his leg strength to kick him off. Well, Close like this, the drop kick didn't. Boy, that time he, he was able to give him the comeback and Whoa. hit it. And look at him, just send him over the top rope, right to the floor. We can anticipate what both champion and challenger are building to in this title match. You know that Sting is gonna use Don, if he can, one of his scorpion-type moves, maybe the scorpion death drop, maybe the scorpion death lock. By the same token, I think we're well aware of Kurt Angle's game plan as Angle gets flung into the steel. Angle wants to wear you down, he wants to work on your legs, he wants to work on your knees in anticipation of one thing, that patented submission move, the ankle lock, and there goes Angle again, directly into the rail. Well, right now, it, 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 it's one of the things I swear, I think Sting was thinking about going over the top rope and diving on Kurt Angle, but he changed his mind, and wait a minute, he's got on the table, he just slaps his head right on the announce table, and Sting is just absolutely in total control. Unbelievable. Angle's head meets the wood of the broadcast position as Sting sent him directly into it. Now, the challenger takes the champ by the head and tosses him back inside the six sides, and that's probably a wise move. Sting not doing anything careless, not doing anything reckless. He's not putting himself in a position to get caught like that. He gets himself out of the way, and the shoulder goes directly into the repost by Kurt Angle. He sidestepped the charging Angle. He was going to go for that Scorpion death drop, but Angle raked the eye, and then out of nowhere, Angle catches him off guard with that suplex release. Oh, he did. He got right in behind him, and he hit it, and that's what Kurt Angle needed. He's got to have something, something that he can used to get himself back up in this matchup because Sting has been in total control. But you know one thing about Kurt Angle? 
You give him an inch and he'll take a mile, and he'll take control of it right from here to the finish. Angle senses that the offensive moves have turned it in his favor. Look how quickly he goes for the pin after the slam. Two count only, right back on it again, and again Sting rolls the shoulder. I mean, he put Sting's knee right, I mean, he put his knee right into Sting's back and thought he had the pin set up, but Sting, of course, just pure adrenaline, but look at those, those uppercuts that he uses. And now the rights. They will rock you. First it is that uppercut, snaps your head back, and then the series of right hands, and now Angle takes the boot, puts it right across the windpipe of Sting, trying to take his breath away, and then use the ropes for a little extra leverage as well. And I think about a year ago, and what a wonderful night it was for the icon Sting, and right now, oh, he's got, got himself right there in the clutch of the Kurt Angle, and another pin attempt, but he gets to still run just in time. Angle relentless in going for these pin attempts. And it's a great strategy if you think about it. Hit the suplex, go immediately for the pin. Maybe you get the win, maybe you surprise everybody. And now, Angle goes to the body scissors, wrapping his legs around the midsection of Sting. Rakes the eyes at the same time just to add a little extra pain and punishment. Now he does, he pulls on the chin, rakes the eyes. Just, those are the little, the little things that you do to get inside the head. Let the other guy know there's nothing you won't do to win this match. And sometimes it works for you, and then sometimes it just ticks the other guy off so bad it, it costs it. And look at Sting just grabbing that leg and really forcing it up. But Kurt Angle trying to get the leverage again. Back up to that vertical base is Sting. Angle maintaining the grip with the side headlock. You know, it's been interesting watching the dynamics between Kevin Nash and Angle, between Karen Angle and Kurt, as Kurt unloads that time, belly to belly, release, overhead suplex. I mean, it's gotten to the point where his buddy Kevin Nash said, you're on your own. Remember, Karen Angle has the restraining order against her as well. To me, that means, Kurt Angle, you are on your own tonight against Sting. And right now, he's in total control, too. I mean, it's almost like that, that emotional bubble just burst with Sting. And it's, it, it's, he just looks a little mentally tired. And, and you can see that Kurt Angle's exploiting it, Mike. It, it had to be a concern. Don, it was something we mentioned right off the top of the match. We were surprised that Sting really didn't go balls out in the opening minute. At that point, we realized that it was better that he held back. But now we see the complexion of this match turn totally in favor of the defending champion, and Angle is neutralizing Sting with the chin lock. I mean, he's doing everything he wants to do right now when he wants to do it. I mean, he's got the knee placed into the back, he's pulling back on the chin, and now you can see Sting just trying to reach down and get to his feet, but he can see how, how oh, wait a minute, nice elbow as he's just trying to knock the air on a good angle. Three shots in a row and he gets loose. Angle. Reverses Sting, shoots him off into the ropes, missed the clothesline, and then both men go for the clothesline. Yes, both connect, and you see the impact of that double clothesline move where both Angle and Sting, champion and challenger, go down. Referee Rudy Charles already studying the count. And you've got to wonder, you know, this is the kind of match, Mike, it's so big, and it's just so, everybody anticipates it. And, and you know, as, as being one of the people in that match, mentally, you've got to get yourself so ready for it that it, there comes a point where you just, you wonder how much further they could go, and now they both just get to their feet on pure adrenaline, and the rights are going one after another. A weary sting connects with the right. Now he caught him with another one. Series of shots, rocks angle. Angle misses, Sting connects with the boot. Then the chop, then the clothesline. Look at Sting just fired up, one clothesline after another. Oh, nice boot right to the midsection there by Kurt Angle. Here comes Angle off the ropes, and Sting spine busters him down. It's one, Pin, two, two, no! no. The crowd all anticipating a title change, but Kurt Angle able to get that shoulder up. Now look at the pain in Kurt Angle's face. Here it is. There goes the Stinger Splash. Caught him in the corner with the Stinger Splash, but Angle stays on his feet to the whale one more time. This time it's to the back of the champion. And his chin was resting on the turnbuckle and it put the pressure in. Oh man, he just plants his face right into the mat. Bulldog style face plant by the challenger Sting. The TNA World Heavyweight Championship belt hangs in the balance. Sting.
is gonna go high risk, and that shows you just how important this high stakes matchup is. And he oh. sprints across and suplexes him down. Unbelievable! How quick Here we go. Angle. One, two. Oh. oh, Sting gets the stun right just in time. How quick Ooh. was Kurt Angle right there? That's it's amazing. It looked like he was down and out, out of the corner of his eye. He saw Sting going up, and he got up there so fast it defied logic. He went to take him up for the Olympic Slam. One, Sting rolls two. through. And Sting was so close, took a wild swing. Look at the German. And oh. watch Angle maintain his grip because you know that there's more suplexes on the way. Here's number two. Oh, he wants to hit him with as many of these as he can just to, to just rock Sting's world and just get him absolutely, totally knocked out of where he wants to be. Look at that, three shots. You can sense the confidence level as Angle One, cuts across two. and no! Sting's got the shoulder up as referee Rudy Charles signifies just the two count. I mean, that was so close that time, and it wasn't even a matter of, of having the ability to get the shoulder up. Kurt Angle had it set so well, Sting almost couldn't get the shoulder up. Angle's gonna go for the ankle lock here. Sting in a tough, tough position as Angle applies the pressure. But look at Kurt Angle pulling him back farther into the ring, he knows. And look at Sting trying to twist it. Nice rollover by Sting to take the pressure off. He's got to use his leg strength here to overpower him. And instead he rolls right across. Try to look at this. Scorpion, he's set it Scorpion. Up. He's going to try and get him in the Scorpion. He's going to reverse the ankle lock. He's going to turn him around. And he's going to put him in the Scorpion death lock. Oh, he's got it set perfectly. Kurt Angle's going to tap. Look at it. He's got it applied. He's got it applied. He's stretching it on. Oh, my God. How can Kurt Angle hold on? Wait, Wait a minute. minute. Karen Angle, what, what, about, what, what about the restraining order? What about the restraining order that Sting oh, has? Come on. Kurt Angle couldn't have held out any longer. Let's get her out of here. Oh, no, but look Give at what me. she's done. She stopped the momentum in the back. Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash has come into the ring. Look wow, out. look at this. Kevin Nash just clothesline Sting. Look. Oh, Karen Angle ran interference. They're obviously taking Karen to the back because of the restraining order. But it was Kevin. Damn it, they got us again. Oh. Kevin Nash, he promised that he wouldn't help Angle. Oh, oh God, my. Olympic slam. Oh, my God. Like, wait a minute. The referee is making sure that Karen Angle gets sent out. And look at this. Kurt Angle screaming at him. He's calling for the referee because he's got Sting down and out. Charles in, pin, two. Now it took too long. You can see, you can read Angle's lips. He said, what were you doing? I think that's Angle's fault because that was his wife that came down here to interfere. And then that Kevin Nash came out of nowhere. And look at Nash circle the ringside area. I'm telling you, that was a situation that backfired because referee Rudy Charles went to make sure that Karen was taken out. He didn't know what Kevin Nash did. And then when Kurt Angle needed him, he wasn't there. And now Kurt Angle goes up top and Sting fights it off with everything he's got and he just double smacks the head. I knew we couldn't trust Karen Angle or Kevin Nash. The meal ticket's down, but the meal ticket gets both knees up as Sting comes off. Here we One, go. Two. two. No, yeah, he got it up. He was able to get the shoulder off. Oh, my God, that was close. Life left in the challenger Sting. Angle going to go back up to his feet. Gonna pick Sting up at the head. And you know that he's gonna put an impactful move. It's a front slam. Kevin Nash coming out. To, he knows that Kurt Angle was his meal ticket. And he took Sting out with that clothesline as you see him looking on. And now Kurt Angle has Sting where he wants him in the ring. And look at this, as you can see Kurt fighting it. Oh my God! Oh, God. oh my God! That was unbelievable! One. How did he get the shoulder up after that? That's the part that's unbelievable. The fact that Sting is able to power out before the three count. And how about Angle from the top with the high risk? 
And now here's the ankle lock. Oh boy, this is gonna be a tough one for Sting. Check out the positioning. Sting's in trouble in the middle of the ring. And Ankle's got it. The ankle has got the ankle lock cinched in. Oh, he's got it pulled tight. And you gotta wonder, what does Sting have left as he spits in the face? He spits in the face and then he sends Kurt Angle right into right into this head on head. And now Sting struggles. Oh, and then God. Kurt Angle knocks the referee out. Oh, he hits the death drop. Scorpion death drop. Nash is down. Referee's down. Angle's down. Sting no. calling for a rip from the back. And we've got another backup referee that can come out here. Somebody get out here. Sting's got it one. Somebody get out here. You can, you can hear the fans are counting in the building. Referee Andrew Thomas sprints down, slides one, in, counts two. two counts. Oh, no. Ref. Damn it. Look at this. Kevin Nash, and then he cleans his clock. Yeah, you're not going to get involved. You're not going to watch his back. Your meal ticket. That's exactly what he's done. He's covered his butt. Now Nash comes in right on Sting. Look at Nash. There's Big right hand for Sting. We haven't seen him physical like this in years. Oh, look at what Sting is. It's just the crowd just lets their disapproval. Oh, come on. All of us, the crowd in Atlanta, the broadcasters here also showing their disapproval as Nash and Angle double team Sting into the ropes. Somehow he's able to duck it. Oh, he takes the both out at the same time. Wow. How resilient. He stands tall and he feeds off this crowd. Right hand Dex Nash. Now, get Angle. Oh, what a low blow by Angle. Of course, there's no referee to see that. Every time it looks like Steve is rising from the grave. Every time they do something underhanded. It's just pissing you off. Look out and for the baseball bat. The, bat. the signature baseball bat of Sting. As Angle took the shot. And Sting stops it. Sting blocks it. Sting fires back. Back to the gut. Back to the back. To the head. And now Nash tries to come in. And now look at this. Sting uses the ropes. And then the bat. And Kevin Nash falls hard. Angle. Weary. Angle barely gets up to his feet. It's blood, blood is flowing from the head of the challenger. And the champion. Both of them are bleeding. And he hits the Scorpion Death Drop. Rudy Chow. One, two, one, two, two, two. He's got it. stacked against him, but somehow Sting reached out. He reached out places where nobody else could go, and he was able to pull out the victory. He gets his revenge, and he wins the championship in the exact same match. What a great moment for TNA, as Sting holds the championship belt high into the air, soaking in this standing ovation in Atlanta, Georgia. Look at him holding it up. Blood pouring down his face. Everything that you could imagine was sent his way and he overcame it all. What a great feeling in Atlanta where he has been and impressed these crowds so many times. He's the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He returns to his home base, his old stomping ground. And in the process, he wins the gold. Sting gonna stand in the corner, soak it all in. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed an electric finish to an electric night in Atlanta, Georgia, where Sting has become the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. The icon Sting making his way to the ring. It's been all about respect to him. In his mind, these guys are not going about it the right way. He is an icon, a celebrity, one of the most revered wrestlers ever to compete in the ring. He has never lost at Bound for Glory. The past two years, he has won the title there. Now he looks to reclaim the TNA World Heavyweight Championship once again. Standing six feet, 
two inches tall and weighing 255 pounds, he is the icon, Sting. athletic marvel and a ground and pound specialist. Punishment is his goal. He stands six feet two inches tall and weighs 290 pounds. He is Samoa Joe, the reigning TNA heavyweight champion of the world. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA referee, Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Sears Center in Chicago, Illinois, it's your Bound for Glory main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 255 pounds and comes to us from Venice Beach, California. He is the number one contender for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. This is the icon, Sting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing standing in the corner to my right. He weighed in this morning at 290 pounds and comes to us from the Isle of Samoa. He is the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Show. I don't think that we can possibly overstate the importance of this match as it relates to TNA going forward in 2008 and beyond. 
Oh, I agree, Mike. I mean, think about what's already happened since Sting started on this quest. I mean, you've seen Booker T, you've seen Kurt Angle, all these guys follow along in his footsteps. The Sting comes out like a house of fire, just throwing punches, and Joe trying to figure out what he's gonna do, and that's what Joe does. He lets Sting commit himself. Sting almost got himself too worked up. Samoa Joe, it's not just about beating you, it's about making sure you can't it. do anything. Wow, suicide dive right through and right on the sting of the guardrail. Nearly 300 pounds behind that suicide dive from the reigning champion, Samoa Joe. I think the offense from Sting right at the opening bell was maybe an answer to looking across and seeing that fierce look in the eyes of the reigning champion. I mean, you and I have talked about this so often. Both people make great points. You understand what Sting's talking about. When you get the win, you should walk away in and, and relish it and not try to do more insult to injury. Samoa Joe, though, he's somebody that he feels, look, I take TNA all over the world. I love this product. I wrestle every night, everywhere. Where are you? You only show up when the time is right and the paychecks are big. And I can understand that resentment. And I'll tell you something. We've seen Samoa Joe so many years as he takes him into the crowd. We know what Samoa Joe's about. And he's just about one thing, and that's giving it 100% every night, Mike. Samoa Joe so often has referred to his fans, his so-called army, and he's amongst them right now, taking Sting all the way through the crowd here in Chicago, driving him over towards the hockey boards, and Sting tries to fight back after Sting went head first and face first. Good luck, Earl Hebner. These two men are in a furious battle. Nice shots by Sting as he used that backhand and put him right into the neck of Joe to stop that momentum, because Joe was feeling it. I'll tell you, you know, you mentioned the crowd, yeah, they, they, they get a sense of Sting when he comes out because they know what he's meant to wrestling. But one thing about Joe, once the action gets going, it is so hard not to back this guy because he puts it all out there. He just gives it as all every single moment. And look at him go after Sting in a nice shot to the face. Joe tries to gain some distance by going up the steps. Sting is right behind him, but now Joe, after a couple of punches, grabs Sting around the head, takes him up several more flights, and then drops, oh, caught him with the shot that time, right in the head. And Earl Hebner is doing everything that he can, everything within his power, to try and control these two, but I don't think you can do it. Samoa Joe going for that high ground, taking him all the way up to the top, and look at him, he's gonna continue on. He's just proving a point. I think he's letting Sting know that I can do this to you anything I want. But yeah, you were great. Yeah, you meant a lot to all of us. And yeah, I do respect you in ways, but you're not gonna tell me how I have to be as the world champion. Look how high up they are, Don, here at the Sears Center. And while Sting is down, where's Samoa Joe going right now? He's headed up oh, no. towards like a luxury box area, and Joe comes running across and Sting and you gotta be kidding me! He just put his body on the line! He just jumped right over the top and just laid out Sting on the steel steps! Unbelievable! That disregard! Come on, guys, please! Again. We have to see it! Whoa, he what over, a kick! He drop kicked him! He made contact with that, but at the same time, you're right, he gave up his body because look where he lands! My God, he lands right on the concrete steps! Sting was on the other side of the rail on the steps, and he kicked him through the rail! Samoa Joe, I mean, you've got to be kidding! That's just putting your body at harm's way to prove a point! Remember the revelation that we heard this past Thursday night on Impact during the Jim Cornette-led contract signing, that there would be no return match between these two, regardless of what happens, they're gonna settle it tonight. Well, I'll tell you, you can see that's the mindset that Samoa Joe has. And you gotta give Earl Hebner credit. He's letting him go. He knows what emotions are involved in this. And that's what makes him a good referee. He'll get him back in that ring and he'll get things settled down. But right now, this is just a way that you can't stop. You can't stop, you just gotta get out of the way of it. Before Joe can take Sting and throw him either into the steps or one of the steel rails, the Icon fights back. A couple of shots on Joe amongst the crowd, and now Sting grabs Joe and just drags him right across the row of fans. Well, he's just feeding off the fans now. He wants to give Joe something a back that he's just given him, and he had to turn that momentum around and looking to put Joe's face on the rail, and he's got a hold of it again, and now the shot to Joe. Drilled him with the right hand, right on the jawline. And as Sting comes back, 
Sting up on the hockey boards, and he goes into a cross body block and crashes into Joe, and they go right over a whole row of seats. And they're like, I mean, think about it. They're hitting those top of those chairs, and they can break your ribs. I mean, you can hear the crowd as they appreciate it. Sting now grabbing Joe around the neck, around the head. Going to try and take him and drive him face first and does. Back into the board. They, I think there may be some blood coming out from the side of the head of Joe, or maybe from his nose. It is. You can see it. He got his nose busted, maybe even broke. There's no telling because they're being, these guys are fighting it out right in the middle of everybody. I mean, oh, oh man. Wow, Joe able to take his feet out from under him. And you talk about a crotch shot. And now here it comes, that running boot. And he just sends Sting down. This is unreal. Oh, that big Olay kick by Samoa Joe was right on target. And with so much authority behind it. Sting has been weakened here severely by Joe, who all of a sudden you can sense just by the look on his face, and as he just grabs Sting around the head and neck, you can just sense his level of confidence growing. I'll tell you what, though, it has been back and forth. Sting, every time it looks like he's in severe trouble, he's able to draw back on that experience, find an opening and turn it around. But Joe, this is a man on a mission. He just knows what he wants to do. He wants to inflict major, major damage and he's doing it right now. And I think we have to give props to the third man, referee Earl Hebner, because let's face it, Earl could have thrown this match out, but Earl senses not only the importance of the match, but the importance overall of the event at Bound for Glory, and he wants to see these two settle it, just like we all do. Samoa Joe feeding it. He knows, that he knows it's a mixed crowd, but those that love Joe are so dedicated just because he's so different. You cannot define him. You know what I mean, Mike? You cannot judge this book by its cover. He's been that way from the day we've seen him. He just amazes you, and he's just somebody that's been so fun to call and to watch. And, and for him to have Sting tell him what he's supposed to be about, it's just too much. Sting has had so much success at our Bound for Glory events the past several years. He Detroit it in Atlanta, Don, winning the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, but it looks like Samoa Joe is gonna do anything and everything within his power to be certain it doesn't happen a third time. I'll tell you what, this crowd is turned. I mean, I mean, you just heard that Joe's gonna kill you, Chance, going all the way across. They love, oh, nice, as he spins around, the big man can get that boot so high up. I mean, he just doesn't change for anybody. I think you sense like I do, there's certainly a mixed reaction to both champion and challenger. But I think Samoa Joe, the level of respect that he has from the fans here is growing because of his performance tonight. He just is going to be who he is. He does what he has to do. It was like when we saw him Thursday night. Sting, you do what you got to do. I'll do what I got to do. Handshake, headbutt, just to send a message. If you think I'm going to do it by the rules, if you think I'm going to walk the line you want me to walk, well, it's not happening. Joe attempts the muscle buster, but Sting saw it coming. And oh. instead, after several clubbing blows to the back, Sting leaps right at Joe and drops him down with his own version of a DDT. I think Joe got a little complacent there. Joe was feeding off the crowd, and he just got a little complacent. Sting saw an opportunity, and there he goes with the frog splash. Here we go, one, two, not enough. Sting splash off the top, going high risk at a point in the match here where I didn't anticipate that coming. Joe got him a kick right in the gut and picks him up and drops him down with the power bomb. Shoulders down for two before Sting gets him and Joe rolls over into the STF. But he just did exactly what he wanted Sting to do. He just let him there. He just let him there. And Sting thinking he's getting out of one hole. The next thing you know, he's right into another one and looking to pull back. He's got the leg grapevine at the same time. He applies pressure with the cross face and now cranking back on the head of Sting while he has his arm seized, his arm scissored using his legs. And if that weight that Joe has, if he's got it perfectly placed, it is just unreal. And he does. Sting, where's he going to do? He's got to see the ropes. He's got to slide over. Joe's got the grin. Just like this, there's nothing you're going to do. This, and as he reaches out, he grabs that arm and pulls it backwards. 
Hebner says what do you say, Sting? He was motionless for just a couple of seconds there. I think trying to do everything within his power to block out the pain, and as he slides just a couple of inches over, he's able to take his leg and drape it over the bottom rope for the break. Good ring awareness there by Sting. Sure he was, was just able to slide enough. That's Joe. the veteran's edge. You're right. Look at him, though. He's trying to get to his feet. Joe's just got that, that vertical base, and, and look at him, he's just toying with him. Oh, look at Steve trying to fire up! Oh, but look at that snap slam! One, two, not enough. All of the weight behind the snap slam, that one fluid move where you take your opponent up, you drive all of your power right across him, and go right into the pinning predicament, but not enough to put away the challenger. I'll tell you though, Joe, this confidence, look at him. He's got a confidence that he just, you just don't think you're gonna see in a situation like that, but he just feels like he can do whatever he wants when he wants. Sometimes when you get that way, that's when bad things can happen. Slowly, Sting back up to his feet, and Joe with power shoots him off into the corner. Sting sidesteps, could be a Stinger splash. It is. In the corner, Stinger splash, positioning Joe up top. Is he going for a muscle buster? What he's gonna try, that's 300 pounds! Wow, he hits oh, it! Unbelievable! And, and look at Joe get up though like it was nothing! How about that? No effect as Joe pounds the canvas and fires off chop! That's like a rifle being shot here! The three chops! There goes Sting to the corner. Joe in, vicious clothesline, grabs it. Right in his face. Oh, slapping him in the face. Oh, you heard him something about how's this for respect, and now look at him, holding the back of the neck. Oh. This sends him right back down on the back of his head with that inverted DDT. And this time, Sting oh. pops right back up to his feet. You know, he hit him with that Scorpion Death Drop. He did the same thing. The muscle bus on one end, the Scorpion Death Drop on the other, and Sting lets him know, you're not gonna beat me in my move. Sting catches him with three shots. Sting, Stinger Splash, this time to the back of Joe in the corner. A weary Joe turns around, and a Sting comes at him. He caught him again with the splash. Here goes Joe for the ride. Can he turn it around on Sting? Not to be. Stinger oh, Splash. Oh, look at his strength. Catches him in midair and powers him down. Unreal how he can turn things around on a dime. It's pure power. He shakes his head like, whatever you got, I can take. Look at that look. What's going through that mind? I said it earlier. I saw it in his face backstage. I saw it in his face when he came down the entrance ramp. A level of intensity that I don't think we've seen from Samoa Joe in the years that we've had him here in TNA. You could just tell it tonight that he thinks that this is the night that he has to prove to the world that Sting's pleas for respect are not gonna be answered. And those are three vicious, vicious knees. And he tells Earl Hebner to count it. You know what, you see some moves like that, Don, and all of a sudden I'm starting to flash back to the Samoa Joe match with Booker T in Houston, Texas. Well, you know what it was then. It wasn't a matter of beating him. I mean, that's what, what it's about Six. with Joe. It's about making sure that you don't get up. And Seven. think about this. There's no rematch here. It may not even be just about the title for Joe. He may be wanting to make this Sting's last match that he ever has. Look at him just kick the back of the leg, kick it in again with viciousness. And with each lethal blow by Samoa Joe, you sense the same thing that we saw in that match with Booker. You just mentioned it, Don. Is it about beating Sting? One, two, three. Is it about beating Sting to the point where he's not able to answer and to prove that this war for respect is gonna be won by Samoa Joe? I think he just wants to send the message that you just crossed the wrong line. You came into my territory. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to dominate you. I'm going to wish you were going to wish you never got that ring. It's at five. Six. It's at six. And Sting is not moving. He's, I mean, just barely moving as he tries to get up and use the ring ropes to get back up to his feet. Oh, Joe right back on him. Doesn't even let him finish the count. Mike, he didn't even let him finish the count. He goes right back at him. Earl Hebner now trying to stop him. Intimidation tactics by Joe as he gets in the face of Earl Hebner. And he's got him now. He's, he's grabbed his shirt. Wait a minute. 
Here comes Kevin Nash. He's been a mentor, a mentor of Samoa Joe. As you see Earl Hebner telling him what it is, telling him he's got to stop beating on him. We haven't seen Kevin Nash here in TNA in months. Remember what he said to Samoa Joe? You've got to prove it on your own. He said, I've taught you everything I can teach you. It's all up to you. You're ready. Well, right now, Kevin Nash, and you're going to wonder what on earth Kevin Nash is doing and whose side is he going to be on as he's walking around and he's looking at the situation. And you can see Joe is just absolutely irate with Earl Hebner. Nash surveys the situation from outside. Joe, the intimidation tactics toward referee Earl Hebner. Sting slowly trying to get back up to his feet. And as he comes right at Samoa Joe, Joe catches him with more shots, more rights. And with each amount of pain that we're seeing Sting take here, with each amount of punishment like that DDT, you have to wonder how many matches Sting has left. Oh, he is. He just trying to, you can see that Earl Hebner thinks that Joe's crossing the line, trying to explain what he was doing. He was trying to count him out. Joe didn't want to end it. And now Sting, look at him, leaning over, reaching down, going for that bat. Going for that bat. He's got it in his hands. Sting up in the corner. And Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash just rips the bat right out of Sting's hands. He's not going to let him use it. And look at that clothesline as he takes him out. Nash is here to ensure that Samoa Joe has that fair footing, that fair ground against Sting. That's been proven to two. two. Oh, was that close. I mean, it was their master plan. He wanted to make sure that no way did Sting steal this one. No way did Sting use that bat and catch Joe when he wasn't looking. You're going to have to do it with your hands and your feet. And Joe is just absolutely dominating. One shot after another, and here he goes off the road. Oh, but Sting jumps down. Oh, wait a minute. Nash just caught Joe with the bat. What the hell did we just say? He just cracked Joe. The opportunity came, and Nash just killed him with the bat. Kevin Nash has just used Sting's baseball bat on Samoa Joe. Scorpion. One, two, he's got it. Here is your winner and new TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Sting. Kevin Nash came out here and it looked like he was on Joe's side. It looked like he had his back. But when the opportunity came, he wanted to be the one that took Joe out. And let's look at the replay of this unbelievable matchup as to how Sting became the champion. Let's go back. Let's revisit what went down. You see Kevin Nash with the baseball bat shot to the back of Samoa Joe. And then it's Sting hitting it. Yes, Scorpion and the eventual three count. And Sting has done it. Think about that road that those guys have been under. Kevin Nash taught Samoa Joe what the hell it was to be a champion, and he was the one that cost him. History repeats itself again. Just like in 2006 at Bound for Glory. Just like in 2007 on October 12, 2008 at Bound for Glory in Chicago. Sting becomes TNA World Champion thanks to Kevin Nash.
Well, Ric Flair, anyone who put a model wanted to know, you know, it, it's all about ratings to the network. But I'll tell you, if I am Jeff Hardy, this man here, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, I'm sweating a little bit right now. It's tough to prepare for someone that you don't, don't even know who you're going to face. And that's what Hardy is up against here. Who is, who is the opponent going to be? And now, introducing his opponent. Looks to be in tremendous condition. Sting, the consummate veteran, the pro, not rushing out to go after Hardy. Letting Jeff Hardy come to him. Meanwhile, Sting, he's the challenger. Taz, can you imagine what's been going through the mind of the challenger, the icon Sting, as we just talked about on the sidelines for the past four months? refusing to deal with Hogan, Bischoff, and Immortal. But now he's back, and now he's challenging Hardy for the title. Well, that's what, this is exactly what Jeff Hardy needs to do, is get control of this match. He's the champion. He has to try and dictate the pace and whatnot. I mean, again, as I said earlier, Hardy 
had no clue he was going to face. Tough to prepare for a man that you're not even sure who it's going to be. Where Sting, on the other hand, knew who he was going to face. Champion turns it around with Jeff Hardy in control. He's going to try and elevate oh, Sting nice. up. Oh, there it is, here it is. Stop. Gonna go Scorpion. Oh my God, already? There it is, turns him over. Scorpion death lock applies. Oh my God, look at the pain that, that Jeff Hardy's in. The world champ's in grave danger. Referee Brian Hebner, he's in great position, checking to see if oh the world God. champ is gonna tap, if he's gonna submit. Look at Hardy. Listen, Jeff Hardy's doing the right thing, trying to get to that rope to break the hold. He still, oh, he just made contact. Listen, like Jeff Hardy or not, throughout Hardy's uh, very uh, successful career, he is known to be extremely resilient, but he also might be hurt right now. In terms of successful careers, how about over a dozen reigns as world heavyweight champion for the icon Sting in his career? How's that for a resume? Oh, that's huge, and right now Sting now going out to get Hardy because he sees that Hardy's injured. Very smart by the challenger, Sting. Weakened by the Scorpion. Oh, my God. Oh. Sting up on the oh. ramp. Suplex, and Hardy oh. crashes down back first. Wow, that was a splat and a half right there. Sting realizes that he's got to get the champion back towards the ring area. Oh, there goes Hardy face first right into the steel guardrail. I don't think that... Uh, Sting can't get violent and vicious if need be. He realizes, Sting realizes what's at hand here, the opportunity to be the TNA World Champion. Oh, not again. Like I said, Mike, whoa, what whoa, is... Whoa, 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 oh, the Stinger splash. But Hardy just moved out of the way, just at the point where Sting was gonna make contact. Well, that was, that was a, a, a great moment there for Jeff Hardy, and I'm sure maybe that maybe gave a, a sigh of relief backstage to Hulk Hogan, oh. to Eric Bischoff. It's like I said earlier, you have to assume that they are freaking out right now, being Hulkster and, and Bischoff. One would certainly think so, Taz, in the complexion of this match. It swung a full 180. Sting in control for much of this bout. But now the champ, Jeff Hardy, he's back in the driver's seat. The top of our broadcast, we saw Hulk Hogan and Bischoff and Flair immortal. Hogan's in complete control of TNA now. We saw Dixie Carter more or less get embarrassed and humiliated. But now the shocker by the network lining up Sting as the challenger for Immortals put on him, the world champion, Jeff Hardy. Champion neutralizing the challenger keeping Sting here in a position where Sting can't use those explosive offensive moves. That is, until Sting regains the vertical base. And usually Jeff Hardy's the one with explosive offensive moves. But like I said earlier, Jeff, oh, oh, oh. going for the twist of hate. No luck. Sting shoots him up into the rope, but Hardy answers. Putting a big overhand right to the third. I'm telling you, Jeff is thrown off. Hardy's thrown off. He's not wrestling his normal style here. Taz. And look at oh, Sting just dropping Hardy with every punch he throws. When they go to the striking game, when they go to the power game, got to be advantage Sting, correct? Oh, sure. Sting's got the size advantage, and Jeff Hardy is a veteran, but Sting oh, 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 plant. has the experience advantage, which is rare when Hardy faces someone. Uh oh, wait a minute. Gonna set him up. Could be Scorpion Death Drop. Driving him right down. Challenger over. Hooks the far leg. Two. Oh. Wow. Woo. Sting seemed to oh, be a little uh, shocked and surprised at that. That was close. <laughs> Look at the, the face of Jeff Hardy just told the story. It encompassed everything that's going on through the mind of Here Jeff Hardy. Stinger splashing again. Hardy moves out of the way. Catches the arm, crushing Sting with the elbow. Oh. Hardy crunched up on top. Oh my oh, God. God! From the top, the Scorpion death drop by almost, Sting. Almost snapped his neck, Mike. Gonna drag Hardy back out to the middle of the ring. Gonna pick him up again. 
Ouch, thing's not done. The limp body of Jeff Hardy powered down. Another Scorpion death drop. Steve up top, here's one, here's two. New champion! The winner of the match. And new TMA heavyweight champion of the world, the icon, Sting! History made right here in North Carolina on impact. We just crowned a new world champion? A new TNA World Heavyweight Champion in the form of the returning icon. Sting comes back to TNA on March the 3rd, 2011, and becomes the World Heavyweight Champion. scheduled for one fall and is your Impact Wrestling main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, Impact Wrestling official, Mr. Brian Hebner. And now, from Universal Studios Orlando, Florida, it's time for your main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 259 pounds and comes to us from Venice Beach, California. He is the challenger, Sting! Introducing a standing to my right. He weighed in this morning at 234 pounds and comes to us 
from Green Bay, Wisconsin. He is the current reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Anderson. Well, that's what it's all about right there, the championship in the hand of the champ. Mr. Anderson, the new proud member of Immortal. That's the hood ornament right there, man. When you're the champ, that's the Hulkster. Hogan knows. How about the pressure, Taz, of someone like Anderson joining Immortal? I mean, I'm sure it's great for Immortal. They now have the world heavyweight title in their possession. But at the same time, Anderson's got to deliver. He sure does. Pressure's on, no doubt. When you're the champ, the pressure's always on, especially when you got Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan breathing down your neck. But talk about pressure. How about the challenger here, my man? I mean, what, if Sting, if he can grab the World Heavyweight Championship here in this match, that comes, you, put, you know, you, you get power that way. Sting needs that power if he ever even wants to attempt to dethrone Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan here in Impact Wrestling. He knows that, Sting. 100% in agreement, Sting knows that as well. And when it comes to Sting and Anderson, you would think that Anderson might have an advantage just in terms of knowing Sting, being able to see so many of Sting's matches through the years. But think of this, this is a completely different Sting. It's crazy. How do you even prepare for somebody who is this unpredictable? You see it right here in the early goals of this match. Anderson has to bail out to regroup, which is the right thing to do. Because Sting is just, you know, he's kind of like a little bit, you know, insane. Just a little bit. A little bit. Sting just cornering the champion. Anderson tried to escape. Sting will have none of that. But these big overhand chops to the head of Anderson. Not even punches, they're just wow. like clubbing blows. And Anderson has had his concussion issues in his career, correct? No doubt. So those shots to the back of the bean are not fun if you're the champion. Shot after shot, it dropped Anderson in the corner, but Sting brings him out. Back to the middle of the ring, off the inverted atomic drop. A standing drop kick by Sting. Damn, that's impressive. No kidding. Sting's thrown a couple of drop kicks in his career, you know, but that definitely was very impressive. Good physicality right there by the Stinger. You never know what Sting's gonna do. Sting don't know what he's gonna do. And I think it Anderson, taking a look at his face, he doesn't know what he's gonna do right here. Out to the floor, an attempt to regroup, but good luck. What are you gonna do against somebody like Sting? Well, you're gonna try it outside in shoulder block first. Sunset flip attempt. Whoa! Great slam. You know what it is? Just my opinion, I mean, Sting is deranged, he's whacked, he's nuts. I'm starting to think he might be a little bit crazy like a fox, you know what I mean? The way he orchestrated this whole, these clown attacks and, and using fortune. Look out! Oh! Stinger splash in the corner, rocks the World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, the champ's in deep, deep grave danger here. Challenger gonna go to the well a second time, but Anderson, oh, a perfectly placed dropkick. It went right into the knee of the onrushing Sting. Very smart, I think that might have been a perfect game of possum by the champ, champ playing possum taking out maybe one of the wheels of Sting, which will help you big time with Sting's arsenal. Sting cannot use that scorpion leg lock the way he's used it for years. How can he get a Sting a splash if he can't explode off jumping off his leg, you know what I'm saying, off his feet? It's a great strategy here by, by the champion. Obviously, the focus of his game plan as he sticks out the knee and goes airborne, drops his own knee directly onto the leg of the challenger. Yeah, I mean, this is just, you can see there's no signs of Anderson letting go of that leg, the shin and the knee, driving his knees, in, his knee into Sting's knee, so. This is a very smart thinking by the World Heavyweight Champion.
control of this match, which Sting had right from the outset, all of a sudden taken over by Anderson. Whoa, whoa, who steps this, over. Is he going to go Scorpion now and try and beat Sting with his own finishing move? Talk about a slap in the face. Hogan and Bishop would love this, right? The dramatic he's got, he's got it. it. Makes that big step. Sits down with all the pressure now on the not only the legs, but the lower back of Sting as well. How disrespectful to possibly beat a man with his own hold. We see it before in our industry. It happens rarely, but it does happen. It's the ultimate sign of disrespect, oh, isn't big it? time. It's right in your face. Sting trying to get the rope break. Reaches out, makes contact with the ropes. How proud right now, Mike. How proud is Hulk Hogan, immortal Eric Bischoff. How proud are they of right now at this moment of this win? They got to be loving this. The fact that they have the World Heavyweight Champion aligned with them, aligned with Immortal. The fact that Anderson is taking it to Sting. You know how Bischoff wants to have Sting eliminated. He's talked about it repeatedly. And they are watching Anderson do exactly that. Dissecting Sting, working first on the leg. Now he's going to stake out the leg on the bottom rope. Could be doing damage here. Watch Could out. be doing some damage Watch out here. To, uh, the oh, Cannon balls down with all of his weight across the knee. Should be doing a lot of damage to the ligaments in the knee of Sting. Drags him back out to the middle, so Sting can't use the ropes and gets two before Sting rolls the shoulder. I'll tell you what, I mean, remember, I mean, Sting, he used the clowns, you know, fortune to eliminate a mortal, right? I mean, but it looks like right now, Sting, even though he eliminated the mortal, is going one-on-one, -on -one. he's not doing that well. With, with the champ here, and he's about to make court, get caught in a single leg Boston Crab. Anderson continues to apply the torque, the pressure on the knee. Well, if Anderson takes that other foot, steps over, it'll be a full single leg grab. Anderson's got good torque on the knee, but Sting. To try and use the free leg. Successfully so. Yeah, good counter. Good counter by, by the challenger. <laughs> Sting unloads with the right, but you can see how much he's favoring the injured knee and injured leg. Yeah, you don't have everything oh. behind those punch. That one might have worked. Which sure did. And that backhand did, too. Sting right. Back. A little bit of everything. Backhands, front hands, left hands, close lines, everything. Now a dazed Anderson. Goes into the ropes, and as he comes off, Sting. Oh, delivates him right into the ring ropes. Yeah, they catch uh, Anderson's throat. I think he wanted to, but... Oh, look at this! Side! Right check! Yeah! We saw earlier Anderson use Sting's finisher. Now Sting gonna try and do it on Anderson. No, just two. Now, I'm telling you, man, the consummate veteran, the pro right there, going back to play more mental games now with a member of Immortal, with a world champ, by using his whole hold, own hold on him. Yeah, how about that message that it sends to Anderson? And I think the message is fired up the champ. Because after a series of right hands, hey, wait, wait, Sting out. taking up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You see the contact, Sting's feet and legs caught the referee, Brian Hebb. Oh! But yep. then Anderson gets shoved off. Sting was trying to send him into the ropes, and the referee gets knocked to the floor. Sting into the Scorpion. Can he step over and apply the Scorpion deadlock? Can he fully have it locked on? Well, will he have enough strength in that knee, his left knee to plant? Looks like he does. Oh, kind of, he's got it to the side. That looks like he's maybe fighting through that pain, maybe trying to improvise a little bit. And Anderson's tapping out! If we had a referee in there, we'd have a new world heavyweight champion. See, whoa. Well, that's Bully Ray here. It's, it's the one member of Immortal that, the, that those evil clowns did not eliminate from the scene. Billy Ray's got that chain. I'm sure there's not a big clock attached to the bottom of it. You know Bully Ray's gonna do some damage right here. Reps incapacitated. And Sting just laying in the ring, defenseless. Hold him up, champ! Bully Ray screams out, you can hear it. Hold him up, champ! Anderson obliges. Sting not able to fight back. And here comes Bully Ray with that steel chain wrapped around his hand. Good. What the hell? Now what? 
What the? What the hell is this? Wait a minute. Oh! We already saw the four clowns from the rafters. We already saw them revealed. Who the hell is this? And another black out of the impact zone. And, and when the lights come back on, Anderson alone in the ring, the clown all the way up on the ramp. from behind, Scorpion oh. death drop! Where's the referee? Sting stops up, Hebner slides in, here's one, here's two! New World Heavyweight Champion! He did it! Shocking moment! No help from another clown! Sting promised us earlier. He said, I've got, I've got backup! And look who it was! 